Hello and welcome to the Maths Matrix. My name's Rebecca and in today's video we're going to be doing highest common factor and lowest common multiple. For today's lesson you'll need paper and a pen, you'll need to know how to draw a factor tree, so if you don't know how to do that then go back to my previous video on expressing a number as a product of its prime factors where we cover how to do that and preferably you'll need to know how to do multiplication without a calculator because this topic is quite often on a non-calculator paper. It can be on either, but often they like to put it on a non-calculator paper because it's a good opportunity for them to check your general arithmetic. In a minute, I'm going to put a list of questions on screen. If you're on foundation tier or you're on higher tier but you're only expected to get a level 5 or perhaps 6 and you know that you can confidently do questions 1 to 5 on the sheet that I'm going to show you then you don't need to watch this lesson, you can just skip on to the next one. If you're aiming for more than a level 5 or 6 then you need to be able to do all the questions on the sheet. So if you don't know how to do the later ones, then stick with the video and we'll discuss some exam applications of highest common factor and lowest common multiple. If you know that you can do all the questions on the sheet, then you don't need to watch this video, you can just skip to the next one. All right, so here are the questions now. Okay, if you're still watching, then I assume that you didn't know how to do all the questions on that sheet that you needed to be able to know. So let's get started on how to sort that out. If you put a title of highest common factor and lowest common multiple, And before we start properly, we'd better just talk a bit about what factors and multiples actually are. So a factor is a number that divides into another number. So if we consider the number 12, a factor of 12 would be 2 or 3 or 4 or 6 because those numbers all divide exactly into 12. 5 is not a factor of 12 because 12 doesn't divide by 5 an exact amount of times but anything that fits into another number an exact number of times is a factor of that number. Multiples are numbers that appear in that number's times table. They're numbers that this number itself fits into so 12 is a multiple of 12. 24 is a multiple of 12, 36 is a multiple of 12, because 12 itself fits into all those numbers an exact amount of times. So factors are something that fit into a given number, and multiples are something that that given number itself fits into. And if you ever can't remember the difference, I say to people, factors are fewer, multiples are more, because the factors of 12 are less than 12, or 12 itself is actually a factor as well, because 12 goes into 12 exactly once, but factors are smaller numbers, and multiples are bigger numbers, so factors are fewer, multiples and more and that should help you to remember which is which. So that's what factors and multiples actually are. If you now put, um, so start writing this as notes, put if on an exam you are given a pair of numbers and are asked to find the highest common factor or lowest common multiple
draw a factor tree for each number. Put the factors into a Venn diagram. The highest common factor is given by the middle of the Venn diagram. The lowest common multiple is given by the whole Venn diagram. All right, so then put EG Find the HCF and LCM of 75 and 120. So if you copy that down, and on an exam, they might give you the abbreviations HCF and LCM as well. So they might write it in full or they might give you those abbreviations. So it's fine to use either from now on. Right, so what we do first of all is we make a factor tree for each of those numbers. So if I break 75 down into a product of its prime factors, 75 is equal to three lots of 25. Three is prime and 75 isn't, uh, 25 isn't. So I break 25 down further into five and five. 120 is 12 times 10. 12 can be broken down into three and four. Three is prime and four isn't, so I'll break four down further. 10 breaks down into five and two. So now I have my factor trees and I don't actually have to finish off by writing the product of prime factors when I've got my factor tree. That's all I need for HCF and LCM. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to put this information into a Venn diagram and there are other ways that you can do it at this point, but I actually really like the Venn diagram method. It's not the way that we were taught it at school and then a student showed it to me and I thought that's such a nice, neat method. I really like that. So it's the one that I've always taught since then. So what we do then is we draw a Venn diagram. On one side of the Venn diagram is going to represent 75 and the other side of the Venn diagram is going to represent 120. Anything that the numbers have got in common, we're going to put in the middle of the Venn diagram and we're only going to put it once if they've both got the number. So they both have three as a factor. So I'll put three in the middle of that Venn diagram and then I'll cross it off that one and I'll also cross it off that one. They've also each got five, so I'll put five in the middle of the Venn diagram and I'll cross it off that one and I'll cross it off that one as well. Then this one has an extra five that that one doesn't have, so I'll put five on this half because only 75 has that extra five and then I'll cross that out. And what I usually do, you don't have to do it this way, you don't have to cross them out at all, but I think it helps you to keep track. If they're shared, I always cross them out that way, one on each. And then if they're not shared, I always cross them backwards. It's just my little way of doing it, but feel free to do it that way too if you want. 120 has a two, and it has another two, and it has another two all of which 75 didn't have. And by that point, I've crossed out all the factors on my factor tree. So I've got my Venn diagram. 
And then we said in our notes that the highest common factor is given by the middle of the Venn diagram. So the highest common factor of 75 and 25 equals these numbers multiplied together. So equals three times five, which is 15. So my highest common factor is 15. And that's the middle of the Venn. Then my lowest common multiple is given by timesing all the numbers in the Venn diagram together. So that's going to be 5 times 3 times 5 times 2 times 2 times 2. Uh, Five times three is 15, times five is 75. And that makes sense because this circle on the left represents the number 75. So you can actually save yourself a bit of work by thinking all the numbers in that circle multiply to give 75. 75 times two is 150, times by two again is 300, times by two again is 600. So the lowest common multiple of those numbers is 600. Now, if you get to a bit that you don't know what the answer to the multiply is, that's where your long multiplication will come in. So you'll work it out to one side. Also, it doesn't matter what order you times numbers in. So if I work this list backwards instead and say two twos are four, times two is eight, times five is 40, times three is 120, times five is 600, I get the same answer. So when you're timesing numbers, it doesn't matter what order you go in, but they all do need to be times together. So if I times all that then together, I get 600. That's my lowest common multiple, and that's all of the then. And that's it. That's highest common factor and lowest common multiple. So a bit like factor trees, it's quite fun to do. It's quite easy to do when you know how the hardest bit is timesing the numbers at the end. So I'll show you another one. So if you put EG, find the HCF and LCM of 360 and 500. I'm going to have to write quite small for this one, I think, or else I'll run out of space. So I'll read it out as I'm writing it, then you know what's happening. So if I draw my factor tree for 360, it's got a note on the end, so I'll use 36 and 10. 36, it doesn't matter what factors you choose here, I'll choose 4 and 9. 4 breaks down into 2 and 2, both of which are prime. 9 breaks down into 3 and 3, both of which are prime. And 10 breaks down into 2 and 5, both of which are prime. Okay, just going to switch pens, this one's getting a bit dried out, I think. 500 breaks down into 50 and 10. 50 breaks down into 5 and 10. 5 is prime and 10 isn't, so I'll split the 10 into 2 and 5. And I'll split that 10 into 2 and 5 as well. Right, so then I'm going to put that into a Venn diagram. So I'll have this side represents 360 and that side represents 500. They've each got a two, so I'll put a two in the middle and I'll cross the two off each diagram. They've each got another two, so I can put another two in the middle and cross a two off each diagram. They've each got a five, so I can put a five in the middle and cross a five off each diagram. And then 360 has a three, which 500 doesn't have. And it has another three, which 500 doesn't have. And it has an extra two, which 500 doesn't have. 
and 500 has got an extra 5 and it's got another extra 5. And then because I've crossed out as I'm going along, I can see then that I've included every, um, every factor that I need to. Then I can put highest common factor equals, that's the middle of the Venn, so 2 times 2 times 5. 2 times 2 is 4, times 5 is 20. So my highest common factor is 20. The lowest common multiple is going to be all the Venn. So 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 times 5. Then all of this circle here represents 360. So 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 all represents 360. So the answer up to that point is 360. So now what I need to do is multiply 360 by that 5. So up to this point, I've got 360, so that's where I'm up to. If I times that 360 by 5, I don't know what that is in my head, so I'm going to do long multiplication. 5 zeros is 0, 5 sixes is 30, 5 threes are 15, and add the 3 on makes 18. So up to that point, I've got 1800. And then that 1800 itself needs to be times by 5. So I'll do it up here. 1800 times by 5. 5 zeros is 0. 5 zeros is 0. 5 eights are 40. 5 ones are 5. And add the 4 on makes 9. So the lowest common multiple equals 9,000. All right. And that's why you need to be able to do multiplication without a calculator, because if that question appeared on a non-calculator paper and you weren't able to times all those numbers together, then you wouldn't be able to get the mark. And I think students think I'm making it up sometimes when I say, do you work enough to one side? I think they think that I have some magical way of just knowing the answers. All I know is that if I encounter something like 360 times 5 that I don't know in my head, I know that I know how to work it out. And so that's what I do. I go off to a different bit of paper and work it out. And then when I had to times that by 5, I don't magically know the answer. I just work it out. And the only difference between me and you is that I can probably do it a little bit quicker because I do it more often. Um, but I'm not doing anything different to what you'll be doing. So never be afraid to do your working off to one side because that's just exactly what everybody else is doing. Some people can just do it more quickly than others. All right. Right. So I'll give you some to have a try at. Um, and then as ever, I'll go through them when you've had a look at them. So if you do... Um, Find the HCF and LCM of 45 and 72. Okay, so actually write the question. Find the HCF and LCM of 45 and 72. And then hit pause, have a go. When you've tried it, hit play, and I'll show you the answer. Right, so let's have a look at this one. So, 45 is five times nine. Five is prime. Nine breaks down into three and three. 72 is eight times nine. Doesn't matter if you went for two different numbers there, as long as they really do times together to give 72. Eight breaks down into two, which is prime times four, which isn't, and four breaks down into two times two. Nine breaks down into three times three, both of which are prime, so I'll circle them. 
and then I'll draw my Venn diagram. So that side's for 45, that side's for 72. Now they've each got a three in them. So I'll cross a three off each and put it in the middle. They've each got another three, so I'll put that in the middle and cross one off each. Then 45 has a five that 72 doesn't have. And 72 has three twos, which 45 doesn't have. So I'll put them on the right and cross them off. Right, so then the highest common factor is the middle of the Venn, which is three times three, which is nine. So your highest common factor there is nine. And then your lowest common multiple is all the Venn. So it's five times three times three times two times two times two. Um, now all of that side there represents 45. So my five times three times three part takes me up to 45. 45 times two is 90. 90 times two is 180. 180 times two is 360. So my lowest common multiple there is 360. And if you needed to do some long multiplication to work that out, that's absolutely fine. No problem with that. All right, I'll give you another one to do. So if you find the HCF and LCM of 300, and 400. Okay, find the HCF and LCM of 300 and 400. Hit pause, have a go, hit play, I'll go through it. All right, so 300 is 30 times 10. 30 breaks down into 5, which is prime, times 6, which isn't. And 6 breaks down into 2 times 3. 10 breaks down into 2 times 5. Again, it doesn't matter if you picked different numbers at this stage and different numbers at this stage. You'll all get the same numbers in circles at the end if your numbers were correct. 400 breaks down into 40 times 10. 40 breaks down into 5, which is prime, times 8, which isn't. 8 breaks down into 2, which is prime, times 4, which isn't. And 4 breaks down into 2, times 2. 10 breaks down into 2, which is prime, times 5, which is prime. So I'll put those into a Venn diagram. So they both have a five, so I'll put a five in the middle and cross it off each diagram. They both have a two, so I'll put a two in the middle and cross it off each diagram. They both have another two, so I'll put it in the middle and cross it off. They both have a second five, so I'll put that in the middle and cross it off. Then 300 has a three, that 400 doesn't have, so I'll put that on 300 side and cross it off. 400 has two extra twos that 300 didn't have, so I'll put those on 400 side and cross them off. So that's what my Venn diagram looks like. Then I will do the look, uh, highest common factor. So highest common factor is the middle, so is five times two times two times five. Doesn't matter if your order was written differently. Five two is a 10, times two is 20, times five is 100. So the highest common factor is 100, and that's the middle of the Venn. The lowest common multiple is all the Venn multiplied together 
So that's 3 times 5 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 2. Again, if you've got a different order, it doesn't matter as long as every number is there being multiplied together. 3 times 5 times 2 times 2 times 5 takes us up to 300 because there are all the numbers in the 300 circle. So up to that point, I've got 300. 300 times by 2 is 600 and 600 times by 2 is 1200. So the lowest common multiple is 1200. I'll give you one more to try. So if you do find the HCF and LCM of 72 and 96. So that's 72 and 96. Have a go, hit pause. When you're done, hit play and I'll go through it. All right. So 72 is 6 times 12. 6 breaks down into 2 and 3, both of which are prime. 12 breaks down into 3, which is prime, times 4, which isn't. And 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. 96, there's loads of combinations you can choose for 96. I'm going to choose 4 times 24. But it's up to you. You might have got something different there. 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. 24 breaks down into 4 times 6. 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. And 6 breaks down into 2 times 3. So regardless of what you picked at that stage, those should be the numbers you have at the end. So we'll put those into a van. So they've both got a 2, so I'll put a 2 in and cross it off both. They've both got a 3, so I'll put a 3 in and cross it off both. They've both got another 2, so I'll put another 2 in and cross it off both. They've both got another 2, so I'll put a 2 in and cross it off both. So in the middle I've got 3 2s and 1 3. Then 72 has a 3 that 96 didn't have, so I'll cross that off. And 96 has two extra twos that 72 hasn't got. So I'll put those there and cross those off. Then my highest common factor is the middle. So 2 times 3 times 2 times 2. Which is 2 times 3 is 6. Times 2 is 12. Times 2 again is 24. And then my lowest common multiple is 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes, I have got them all. Um, so... 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 fills up the 72 circle there. So up to that point, I've got 72. 72 times 2 is 144. And if you don't know that and you needed to work it out like 72 times 2, that's absolutely fine. So times in 2 again gives us 144. And then times in 144 by 2 gives us 288. So our lowest common multiple there is 288. Okay, sometimes on an exam, they'll try to trick you a little bit. So instead of giving you two numbers and saying find the highest common factor and lowest common multiple of these two numbers, sometimes they'll give you two letters instead, like X and Y, and they'll give you the numbers already in index form and ask you to find the highest common factor or lowest common multiple from there. It looks harder, but it's actually easier because a lot of the work's been done for you already. So I'll show you an example like that. So if you put um, EG 
x equals 2 to the power 5 times 3 times 5 and y equals 2 to the power 3 times 3 times 5 squared and then put find the HCF and LCM of x and y Now, in this case, we don't have to make a factor tree and we don't even need to know what the numbers X and Y are because the first bit that we normally do is we get the number and we break it down into a factor tree. We don't have to do that here because the factors are already given to us. So what we can do in this case is we can just draw the Venn diagram straight away without needing to make a factor tree. So on one side, I'll just put X and on the other side, I'll just put Y. And it really doesn't matter what X and Y were. All that matters is what they were broken down into. Now, X has got 2 to the power 5, which means that X has got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And Y has got 2 to the power 3, which means that Y has got 2 times 2 times 2. What that means is that they each have three twos in them. So I can put three twos in the middle section there. Then X has two spare twos that Y doesn't have. So I'll put those on X's side. They've each got a single three. So I'll put that in the middle. And they've each got a single five. So I'll put that in the middle. But then y has 5 to the power 2, so it has an extra 5. So I've not needed to do a factor tree. I've just put the numbers straight into a Venn diagram. And after that, it's exactly the same. So now the highest common factor is the middle of the Venn, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. 2 twos are 4. Times 2 again is 8. Times 3 is 24. And 24 times 5 is 5 fours are 20, 5 twos are 10, 11, 12. So the highest common factor is 120. Then the lowest common multiple is everything multiplied together. So that's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. So all the numbers in the Venn times together. Two twos are four, times two again is eight, times two again is 16, times two again is 32. 32 times by three is 96. And that's as far as I can get in my head. So 96 now needs to be multiplied by five. So five sixes are 30, five nines are 45, 46, 47, 48. So timesing that by 5 gives 480. That 480 now also needs to be times by 5. So 5 zeros are 0, 5 eights are 40, 5 fours are 20, and add the 4 on makes 24. So the lowest common multiple is 2400. Doesn't matter if your multiplication is slower than mine. We're all doing the same thing. I might just be doing it a little bit quicker. Um, but that's why you have to be able to do long multiplication without a calculator. So if you're given the number in index form, it looks worse, but it's actually easier because they've saved you some work and you can just jump straight to the Venn diagram. All right. If you're on foundation paper or you're expecting to get around a level five, I'm happy for you not to learn the extensions to this work. I'm happy for you to just stop the video here and be able to do that. Um, if you skip to the very end of the video, I'll flash up there the same questions that I put on at the start. And now hopefully you will be able to do questions one to five. If you're aiming for more than a level five, then stick around and we'll discuss the extension and some exam applications of this topic.
I've actually been recording for quite a long time now and I don't want the video to get too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video here and we'll call this part one. And then in the next video, that's where I'll discuss the extensions up and the exam applications. So if you're trying to get more than a level five, um, come back for part two and that's where we'll discuss the harder aspects of highest common factor and lowest common multiple. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.